Hey guys, I'm here with the Swifty 250. I'm about to do a disc brake swap and I wanted to take you along for the ride. I wanted to tell you how I laid out all the parts that I got. I went to the Boneyard and I picked a 77 F250. It had an 8500 gross vehicle weight, so it had the big kingpins. And the main ingredient that any disc swap, the backing plates, which I have right here. Nobody is reproducing these backing plates, and I don't know why, because they would make a fortune. If... So I picked this year 77 because they have the upgraded caliper mounts. You don't need the pins, which I'll insert a picture. The pins with the short threads on the end that were prone to breaking off. And um, this is pretty much the, the latest design that they had. Now, the backing plates between the two are very similar. There are differences in diameter. So, um, if you do go to the junkyard and you get the later model style like this, you cannot combine it with the earlier rotor that's not the same size. I did the research on it, and I know this because it shows the measurements. So what we have here is a 77 brand new rotor. Uh, looks pretty dang good. Slashes on it, whatever. It doesn't have bearings, but fortunately the hubs are identical. And I will be able to use, out of the Swifty 250, the inner and outer bearings. All I will need is probably new grease seals, but I might even be able to reuse those as well. Now... How did I find out that they're the same? Because I actually did a brake swap before with the earlier style and the truck was not finished and I just decided to sell them. And I never thought I would find these again, but I did. Um, I like the later style better because they got the holes drilled for heat transfer. And um, it's just a better design in my opinion. Um, the caliper is a lot different than the early style. This caliper uses a spring, as you can see, and there's no pins whatsoever. There's no sliding mechanism. The only thing that this, this brake pad slides out and the springs make it contract back and keeps these pads from falling out. This is the, the one I got off of the donor truck. It's a core. And uh, let me turn it over. So what happens is, you know, see, I could just basically just pull this right out, but the spring keeps it from falling out. So once you put this on and it's wedged in between the rotor, it ain't going nowhere. So these two pistons are going to push your thing out and then the spring pressure is going to make it go back. So um, what's cool about this caliper is it's kind of similar to the single piston caliper on an F100. They have these little wedges up here in the front, as you can see. So basically on the backing plate over there, basically it's going to go like this. You see that little wedge? It's like the F100 style. It's going to fit right in there like that. Oh yeah, just because the rotor's not in there. Okay, so it's going to just wedge right in there, right there. And then when it gets to the top, you have this little wedge clip. You slide this in there. You're going to slide this in there like that. And then there's going to be a little clip that holds it on. It's a pressure clip. It, it's bent, and once you put it flat, it won't come out. So that's a lot simpler than the bolted-on kind with the short threads. Now, I do have a caliper here. The pads are so simple to put in compared to the other ones. You just pop them in there, and it comes with the new spring. And then the tension clip. Okay. I bought these as a kit on Parts Geek. It came with the two brand new rotors. The four pads. It did come with the calipers. Two calipers. All the pads and the two rotors. And I think it was uh, in the low 200. I think it was under 300 bucks. Okay, so then also from the boneyard, I got that proportioning valve. Which there's not too many moving parts in there, so it should be good. If not, I'll just get a universal one. You can't really go wrong with taking everything off of a donor truck. 
backing plates, you know, I don't know why you would see. To me, the most important pieces are the backing plates because they sell everything else brand new. You can even get that valve as a universal valve that is basically the same thing. But you cannot get the backing plates. They don't sell them. So you have to find a truck that has them. Now going back to that, there's two different styles. You have the early style that has the pins in it, and I'm gonna put a picture in there. If you have that style, you have to use that backing plate. That backing plate is a little bit different, but this backing plate with the little wedges where you just snap it in, it is ex exclusive for these. The rotors are different size. They're not the same size. They're a little bit smaller and um, it might work. It might not, but with all the research that I've done, they're not the same diameter, they're different. So if you use this backing plate, you need to use this size rotor. Okay, over here, this is the design that was on that 77 F250. This is off the of 72, but any of them that have the big kingpin, the one and one sixteenth kingpin, the tie rod's gonna mount from the top down. So, If you do decide to swap over to this kind of a spindle, you're gonna have to use that same kind of drag link and the same type of uh, tie rod ends because they're not the same. This one is off my 69 F250 camper special and you can see the arm is raised upward. That's because the tie rod mounts from the bottom up. And from everything that I've read and understand from 1965 up until about 1970, early 71, and F-250 only used this type of spindle. They only used that one on the top unless it was over 8,500 gross vehicle weight. And that listed as a crew cab or a fire vehicle or a forest vehicle, something that had a big heavy duty front end on it. So more than likely, you camper special owners, you have a spindle that looks just like this. So if your spindle looks like this, you're gonna save a little bit of money because all you need is this. And what I mean by saving a little bit of money is if you go with this style, you have to also get the pitman arm from that truck. You have to get the drag link and the tie rod in. You're gonna have to get everything off of it. Now, this is a replacement spindle of the exact one that is on my truck. And these two are the same exact thing as far as the shaft is concerned. 162, 162, okay? We're looking at the fat part of the spindle right at the end. That's where the inner bearing goes, 162. Not even picking that up. One sixty two. Okay, see that? They're the same. Let's go to the part where the inner bearing goes. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Now let's do one more and measure the length of this thing. It's about four four and three eighths. Let's go over to this one. What do you know? Four and three eighths. If you have a 67 to a 1970-ish F-250 camper special, and it doesn't matter if it is an early style, like say 72 to 74, or if it's a 75 to a 79. All you need is these brick backing plates. Just go and buy everything else for the year truck that you pulled it off of. You can still use your drag link, your pitman arm, and your tie rod ends, you don't have to change any of that because the spindle shafts are the same. I also at the same time bought me this uh, dual diaphragm brake booster. It is factory on a 69. It's 
part number B1130. It was by a company called Quality Built. Never heard of them before. It was sold on the Parts Geek website. I did look them up and it seemed like a pretty legit company. Hey, there it is. Part number B1130. It's very similar to the Cardon or Cardun, however they call it. I prefer to say Cardon. Anyway, um, it's a little bit deeper than the drum brake one. As you can see, it's a dual diaphragm, so it's a little it bit faster. has the correct end on it for the 69 brake pedal. From 65 to 72, they had the same brake pedal. That 65 to 72 had this type of rod. Now, the drum brake rod has an adjustable rod on it. This one don't. So hopefully this works and my pedal is not sitting too high. But you can see the thickness of this one. This is a single diaphragm and it was for drum brakes. What I've read that you can't use this one. You need a dual diaphragm. Now, the one for the 73 and up, they use a big, huge diaphragm brake booster. Whether it's a dual piston or a single, I don't know, but it's triple the size of this. This actual top piece comes all the way up here, over here. And um, I could have got that one, but like I said, the brake rod is different. There'd be some modifications that needed to be done. And the master cylinder also is different. See the height difference between the two. They are different. This one here is for a disc brakes. The other one is for drum brakes. They're single diaphragm and brake drum master cylinder. You might run into some problems with the disc brakes. Now they might work if you use the right proportioning valve, but I don't think that they would have half as much pressure as if you use the dual diaphragm over there and if you use the proper master cylinder. This one measures front to back about six and a quarter inches. This one measures four inches.